uh, the opposition. And Governor Wallace emerged as a great symbol. In early 1965, Selma, Alabama became the site of a civil rights campaign to enable black voters to register. On Sunday, March 7th, 600 people set out for the state capitol in Montgomery, 50 miles away, hoping to gain national attention. Wallace had issued an order to prevent the march. His state troopers were waiting at the Edmund Pettus Bridge at the edge of town. It'll be detrimental to your safety to continue this march, and I'm saying that this is an unlawful assembly. You have to disperse. You are ordered to disperse, go home, or go to your church. This march will not continue. In the beginning, I thought we would be arrested and just taken to jail. Uh, but when I saw the troopers putting on their gas masks and raising their sticks and the bull whips, those moments when the troopers came toward us, I knew then we would be beaten. events of what would be called Bloody Sunday were witnessed that night by a horrified national television audience. Wallace never intended for that violence to take place on that Sunday in Selma. His police chief lost control of himself, and uh, what you had was a police riot. Wallace was smart enough to know. I mean, he was the one who invented backlash politics, and he didn't want to create his own backlash against his politics by having this type of thing shown on the news nationwide. Wallace was as mad, I believe, as I've ever seen him. He is a very sensible man. He knows that things like that hurts his political image, even in the state of Alabama. The violence in Selma had immediate impact. Days later, President Lyndon Johnson asked Congress to pass the most comprehensive voting rights bill in the nation's history. Then, a federal court in Alabama ruled in favor of the protesters. Judge Johnson has just ruled that we have a legal and constitutional right to march from Selma to Montana. <laughs> Judge Frank Johnson, the old friend Wallace had vilified to rekindle his own political career, had issued the ruling. This time there was no doubt who had lost and who had won. On March 21st, thousands of marchers from across the country set out from Selma, arriving at the steps of Wallace's state capitol in Montgomery four days later. The great outpouring of press, the great outpouring of people of stature from all areas of the country that got into the march, I think showed all of us around Wallace that uh, Wallace had lost that battle. You could look out George's one in the governor's office and see it, and of course, everybody knows that Martin Luther King was a great speaker. And I said, Wallace, you see, if you could speak like Martin Luther King, you'd have all them people following you and you might amount to something. Wallace's aides joked that he was looking at the inauguration crowds of the future. They were not far from wrong. Over the next decade, hundreds of thousands of black voters would register in Alabama and millions more throughout the South. 